Hello everyone. For our first song, let's sing He is my everything. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. Both great and small. He gave his life for me. Made everything. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dearest Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you have given to us. Thanking you, dear Lord, for this time of rest where we could come at your feet and lay our burdens down. We ask you that you would be with us as we watch the program with the participants as they display their faith, their trust, their hope, the, the kindness that you have shown to them. And dear Lord, May these testimonies be a witness, a ray of light and hope to those who are in despair. Bring us out, dear Lord, that 
each and every one of us may see the light at the end of this tunnel. And we pray that as you come, bring hope till Lord to us. Bless us all eternally, for we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. What is that? It is your testimony. Your testimony. It is your story about your encounter with Jesus. When you share your story, it gives the hope that God can do the same for them. Today we have the youth of Salisbury Park Church who will share their testimony on the fruits of the Spirit that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The ultimate symbol of love, cross, we love because he first loved us. Amidst this pandemic, where all of us have experienced fear, some of us have encountered COVID-19, some of us have lost our loved ones, some of us have received miraculous answer for our prayers. Some of us have battled or are still battling with the question, why me, Lord? Some of us have faced financial difficulty, loss of job, disappointments, pain, anxiety, tiredness, and emotional trauma. When I look at all of these things, there's one thing that stands out to me, and that is love. How? Well, let me tell you. I've seen people pray for hours for the long prayer request. I've seen people cook meals for someone who could not manage to fill their stomachs. I've seen people provide finance to the ones in need. I've seen people stand by someone whom they had no one to call as their own. I've seen people take an extra step to fast and pray for someone whom they don't even know. I've seen people selflessly serve others. Isn't that amazing? Praise God for giving us the understanding and spirit of love towards one another. Looking at all of these things, i realized, or rather say, I've learned that God at times uses our hardships and suffering as a lesson or as a stepping stone of a whole new beginning or as a life-changing fact for someone else. Moreover, if we see someone in difficulty, that is an opportunity for us to stand by them and share the love of God. I would like to share a small experience. For those of you who don't know my mom, she's a nurse and she's been on regular COVID duties. So during this phase, when she's to come back home from duty, I as usual would want to go sit close to her, hug her, spend time with her, but she would avoid me and ask me to maintain distance. I used to get really upset. I know that's really silly of me. I used to get upset thinking, stay in the same house, why maintain distance? Now, just because she avoided me, doesn't mean that she doesn't love me. Of course not. What she did according to the situation was extremely right. Similarly, at times when we have unanswered prayers, things are completely out of our hands and beyond our understanding and not as expected. Does that mean that God is away from us and doesn't love us? Absolutely not. God's love for us as an individual is above all. He knows what's best for us. He walks with us through our darkest hours and surrounds us with his love that helps us to bear and endure all things. Let me repeat that. God's love helps us to bear and endure all things. So dear family, in the same way, let us continue to share the love of God with others and uplift one another. John 15, 12. Love one another as I have loved you. Good evening and happy Sabbath. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the fruits of the Spirit which God has given us in the Bible and that is joy. The joy of giving. The word joy in, in itself means a lot to all of us. Have you ever noticed on someone's face when you give gifts to them or probably when you receive gifts, have you ever noticed the smile, the happiness, the joy and that brings a lot of comfort 
within ourselves. It's proven in the past that our human brains, they get activated when you receive and when you give gifts. Now the joy of giving brings smiles on people's faces. Be it in our homes, be it in the community. We all love to receive gifts, but seldom we do we think whether you give gifts to others because every time we want to receive, but we don't want to give. Let's share the joy of giving in small ways. People love to give in the means of monetary funds. People will love to give in the means of gifts just to show their kindness, just to show their love and appreciation. Especially when you have siblings at home and when they have their birthdays or even anniversaries for your parents. When you give gifts to them, you can see the smile, the joy, the happiness on their face. And God has blessed all of us. So let's share the joy, let's smile and let's be happy. Thank you. A very good evening and happy Sabbath to each one of you. I'm Ms. Hadassa and I'm going to testify today about the term peace. My word for 2020 to this date and further on is obedience. And I had been asking God to help me to be just be faithful to whatever he was putting in front of me. However, I didn't expect quite so much all at once. Yet God gave me strength for each day, but I was tired. I would like to put all my turmoils in a nutshell. I moved to another city to achieve something greater in the field of my work. Nearing to an year of work, I was disappointed with the management and a whole lot. I was living in an apartment all alone, combating loneliness, daily chores, followed with work and study pressure. Eventually, the pandemic did hit me hard. I was financially drained. Paying my college fee was a real challenge to me and I was unable to cope up in the new city so I had to move back home which was again a huge financial loss. In the following days, I was unable to think straight and my mind was in, running in million directions. Just then, my family was affected with COVID. Also, my relatives in hometown. Knowing my brother was struggling in the ICU and watching all my loved ones suffer with this virus, my heart physically ached for pain and there was no peace in my soul. This was just a month ago. I got through all this dreaded first. With each situation, I realized God was good and He brings peace that surpasses all understanding. A final note to all of us. Christ wants all of us to have peace of mind. If we do not have it, we miss a part of blessing he wants to give. It's easy for us to think when we are in the midst of a storm that having peace is only for super saints who knows how to have super faith. Since we know ourselves well enough that we are not super anything, we think these experiences are not for us. Christ wants every Christian to experience his peace. His peace enters our heart through the Holy Spirit and makes it independent of all outside conditions. We cannot imagine a life without sorrow. If we do not have peace, we are living below our privileges. And when we are focused on God and others first, we will experience the peace that God wants to give it to us. Selfishness is hindrance for peace. Happy Sabbath everyone. Today, I'm going to share a small testimony from one of the fruit of the Spirit that I learned from, that is patience. Uh, in, in the month of March, my auntie fell um, sick and, and we got her to the hospital. And after getting her to the hospital, we came to know that she was, she was diagnosed with COVID. And we, uh, she, as she was hospitalized, we would always sit outside uh, the, the ICU and pray for the Lord to deliver her from this sickness. And as time passed by, it became um, day, uh, days, days, uh, it became into weeks. 
uh, week and we would always pray for her good health but we would not know um, what was god's plan was and we would just be patient enough sitting the whole day and night and praying for her good health and as time passed by her health was uh, deteriorating and one fine day on april april 13th uh, we we got a news in the morning that she had a cardiac arrest and she uh, she slept in the lord we had a lot of questions like why it had to happen to her like she was the one who was at home um, um she would not go out but why and uh, there are a lot of questions that we that came across and uh, we don't have answers for that and i'm sure that many on in the, in this past uh, two years every we have heard a lot of bad news where our uh, family members and our loved ones our uh, people around us have been affected due to covid-19 and they have and many have lost their lives we don't know why this all had to happen but um, i got i was as i was going through the bible i read one verse in in um, jamaya chapter 29 verse 11 it says for i know the plans that i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future this this verse um, really comforted me but honestly i didn't get uh, answers why it why it had to happen she was so healthy and uh, she was living a good life but why it all had to happen as she was the main uh, person in our family who would look after us but i'm pretty sure that god had a different plan in his mind and by maybe by this incident god is um this incident we have learned that to trust more in him i'm um patience is something which is very important that i learned in this two weeks in the hospital that i would go every day um uh, and uh, pray pray every day over there all so one thing that i would uh, want to encourage uh, you all is that trust in the lord no matter what happens thank you happy sabbath friends have you ever felt so weak that there was no more strength left in you have you ever felt so helpless that there was nothing else you could do it was a wednesday morning i was waiting outside the hospital for the doctors to finish their rounds and give an update on my father's status the doctors called me and said we are not very happy with his situation right now he is critical we are just praying that he gets better these were the few words that i could grasp as the doctor spoke to me the moment i heard the word critical my mind was not working my body was not working i was just lost in thoughts of fear and anxiety i went outside took a moment to pray and i was thinking all sort of things and uh, i was just thinking of of what i could do and and what all could happen and uh, there was nothing that could control me uh, or control my thoughts in that moment i felt so helpless and that time was the peak of the covid crisis it was not just me there were several others who were struggling at that time people were struggling for medications they were struggling for beds they were struggling for oxygen we were just helpless um, at that at that situation the only hope that we had was was god and to have faith in god and so at that time as i was thinking about the words that the doctors had just spoken to me and immediately after that um a, a written letter was given to me uh, that the family is aware about the situation of my father and they asked me to sign on it um and it it there were the different ailments that my father was suffering with and and as i signed my hands were shivering i felt so hopeless uh, there was nothing that i could do at that moment i just wanted to go and meet my father inside the icu 
I asked the medical staff there whether I could go inside and meet my father. They said yes. Uh, since I myself was COVID positive, uh, they said I could get a PPE kit and go inside. Um, that moment was uh, was the peak of, of anxiety that, that I was facing and um, I didn't know how to deal with it. And then I went to the pharmacy to get a PPE kit um, so that I could uh, go and meet my father. As I went to the pharmacy and asked for a PPE kit, words would not come out of my mouth. I was choking. I was not able to speak. And uh, the pharmacist said that they didn't have the PPE kit. And uh, looking at me um, and looking at the way I was speaking, people there, they figured out that there was something serious happening. And so as I walked out in, in disappointment, um, I'm thinking of where I could get the PPE kit from and since it was a peak of COVID, shops were not all open and I didn't know where we would get it. I was walking out into the parking. At that time, a young lady, she uh, she ran out of the pharmacy and she stopped me and, and she said, "Are you like, do you want to go into the ICU to meet uh, someone? And I said, yes, uh, I need a PPE kit for that. She immediately opened her car and she gave me a PPE kit so that I could go um, and, and meet my father. I figured out not everyone uh, who is not a medical staff would have a PPE kit. I know that probably she had someone that was suffering um, or probably in ICU themselves and that is why she had a PPE kit extra in her car. And, um, she gave that to me and within the next five minutes I was able to walk um, into the hospital again and ask permission to uh, get into the ICU so that I could meet my father. Before I could meet my father I was very anxious, very worried but then as I walked in my father was smiling and uh, I was smiling. I was so happy that I could see him. Uh, when the doctor spoke to me and when I was going through those uh, chain of events before I could meet him, uh, my mind was all over the place. But the moment I saw my father, I saw that he was hopeful, he was strong in faith and I needed to be strong in faith so that we could get through this. Um, and praise God, now my father is doing much better. I would not forget this, this particular time uh, in my life because it was the, the, the peak of fear um, that I was facing and I was so helpless, so hopeless. And at that time, um, there was a person that, that showed a kind gesture that wanted to help me out. And it was not just them, uh, there were people that called me immediately and said, don't, don't worry, don't fear, we are here for you, we will take care of it. Um, just like the hen. Uh, takes care of all of its little one, gathers um, them under its folds and protects them. Um, needless to say, the church family has been so kind to us and, and given us food uh, whenever we needed, provided us with things that, that we could need, called us from time to time. I'm so thankful for all the kindness um, that has been shown to me and uh, my family and I know that that it is out it is the overflowing of goodness that that God has shown to each one of us and and this encounter uh, I would not be able to forget in my life and uh, this is just one small incident there have been so many others COVID has taught us that that we are helpless that that we are weak and th there is not much uh, that we could do and praise God because God can do everything for us. Um, and so I want to give all glory and honor to God because he is the one that, that has been helping our family through this crisis, through each one of you. Thank you once again. The question was raised 
As my conscience fell A silly little lie It didn't mean much But it lingered still In the corners of my mind Still you call me here to walk On the edge of this world To spread my dreams and fly Oh, the future's so far, my heart is so frail Think I'd rather stay inside But you love me anyway It's like nothing in life that I've ever known Yes, you love me anyway Oh, Lord, how you love me It took more than my strength to simply be still To seek but never find All the reasons we change, the reasons I doubt And what loved ones have to die But you love me you love me anyway I am swear from your brow but you love me anyway I am the nail in your wrist but you love me you love me anyway See now I am the man who yelled down from the crowd For your blood to be spilled on this earth shaking ground Yes, then I turn away with a smile in my face With this sin in my heart Trying to bury your grace And then alone in the night I still call But you love me anyway Oh God How you love me Yes, you love me Yes, you love me Yes, you love me Yes, you Exodus 33, 19 says, And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show my mercy to whom I will show my mercy. Uh, goodness is described as the fruit of the spirit, which is not merely a moral behavior, but an excellence of character. Uh, so I would like to uh, share with you an incident which happened to me uh, in my college when I was doing my bachelor's. Uh, I was traveling uh, by train from Hosur uh, to my college. Uh, and throughout the day, I was feeling very reckless and uneasy and anxious. Uh, it was just one of those days uh, when you feel like something bad is about to happen. So I fell into an uncomfortable sleep. Uh, and uh, suddenly I was sh uh, shaken awake uh, about 2.30 a.m. by a sudden shuddering and uh, there was wobbling of the train. Uh, by the time I would comprehend uh, what was actually going on, uh, a sudden jolt of the train uh, threw me down from the upper berth. Uh, I fell on the floor 
and uh, heaps of luggage which was uh, on the top berth it fell on me and uh, amidst of this all this chaos i came to realize that the train had been derailed and uh, my bogie was about to fall off uh, so there was panicking and shrieks and cries and screams all around me uh the door of my compartment got jammed uh the situation around me was very chaotic uh after a lot of effort uh, we were somehow able to open the jam door uh but after getting out of the train i came to know that the lorry which was carrying a huge uh, granite stone it hit the train uh just two bogies two uh, bogies uh, behind my train uh behind my bogie and uh, everyone that had been in those bogie along with the truck driver were killed on the spot uh i sh- i stood still and then i went to a corner i closed my eyes and i prayed i prayed uh, to god uh, thanking him for saving me and uh, asking uh, for his mercy to uh, take me and my fellow passengers out of this uh, chaos uh i felt a sudden calm a calmness and a relief uh, in me and a strength in me uh, i looked around and i saw i was surprised to see that uh, no one was crying anymore and uh, uh, every person was uh, helping every other person uh, who were hurt uh, so uh, i witnessed the goodness of god uh, in every soul there uh, no one was brooding over their loss in fact everybody was eager to help each other i realized how god has showered his mercy uh, upon me and i realized how uh, i nearly missed death and uh, because the lord was good to me and merciful to me uh, so this incident uh, motivated me to uh, show my goodness to others uh, and it had actually changed my life a lot uh there often had been uh times when a patient would come to my clinic uh, for an urgent treatment like a swollen jaw or a toothache but uh, he would not be able to afford it and sometimes he would tell me to uh, reduce the amount or do it for free uh so uh, i would treat such patients uh, at a very low cost or for free uh, because even though i would get no income or money out of it uh, this patient would often uh, uh, wish me well and uh, their happy faces would give me true satisfaction uh, and happiness god is good and uh, he wants us to grow in the fruit of goodness uh, so that we can live uh, a fulfilling life full of righteous love Let's it have it to one and all I uh take this time to thank God for what he has done for me for the past in the past few months uh like you all know the past few months have been really hectic and um it has been a challenge for uh most of the medical professionals and me being a physiotherapist it was uh, really difficult for me uh cuz i not only saw patients at uh, the clinic but i also had to see them at home and do a lot of home visits and um it came to a point of time where i had to choose between going uh, or staying at my comfort zone or really going out there and you know helping them out so um i just want to say that uh, god has been really kind and he has helped me so much and at this time of uh, this pandemic that has been going on this crisis that has been going on it has uh, really um, helped and uh, boosted up my faith in god because uh, i constantly prayed and asked god that uh, god if it is your will that i go and see these patients uh, who really need me at home then use me and allow me to um help me to uh, go so uh, it was not only a fear of um, the restrictions that were there at different societies or uh, w- uh, whatever uh, protocols they had but it was uh, it was very risky because 
since I was seeing a lot of patients, uh, I could have been a carrier and I didn't want to get others infected. So it was really uh, difficult on my side, but I had to see uh, these patients because uh, they were physically challenged children and also uh, patients with recent fractures. And um, I had to go mobilize them and help them walk and uh, get them to uh, prepare them for other kinds of functional activities so it was really uh, a difficult decision i decided to go ahead and uh, praise god it's been uh, three months now uh, none of my patients are infected or i'm uh, on i'm on the safe side and i thank god for that and uh, i praise him for every minute of my life um, it's all about the faith and uh, that you have in God and how much uh, you can communicate with Him on a day-to-day basis. So I just want to read something short from uh, the book of Messages for, uh, messages to Young People. Uh, the title is Living Faith. It says over here that uh, darkness and discouragement will sometimes come upon the soul and threaten to over- overwhelm us. But we should not cast away our confidence. We must keep the eyes uh, fixed on Jesus. Feelings or no feelings, we we should seek to faithfully perform every known duty and then calmly rest in the promises of God. This is an amazing promise that God has given us that uh, no matter how you feel, no matter um, what circumstances you are, no matter what challenges are ahead of you, that you need to have complete faith in God and understand that God is constantly with you and uh, will take care of you despite the pandemic, despite um, uh, the obstacle that is ahead of you. So uh, I want to thank God for that. Happy Sabbath Church. Today we are talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And uh, Galatians 5.22 talks about this one particular fruit of the Spirit that uh, is what I understood especially in these uh, times of the pandemic. And this fruit uh, or this word rather has become more clear to me uh, during these uh, times that have passed by. The one that I'm talking about today is the fruit of the spirit called gentleness. So uh, we've been working from home for the past 1.5 years now. And uh, trust me when I say that it is not very easy to uh, work remotely with your team members uh, who, when you are so used to talking to them uh, on an everyday basis when they are sitting around you. It's not easy to communicate with them when you know that they are sitting in uh, different parts of the country for that matter. And uh, that is when it got uh, so hard to be patient with them to uh, talk to them as per their uh, availability, as per their time. But it got even worse when pandemic became a personal issue. When uh, we started seeing our own loved ones, our close ones uh, who were suffering because of that. And not only us, but when we saw our colleagues suffer through that. And it is during this time that uh, I got to experience this word more closely. Because what happened during this time is that We could see someone suffer, we could see someone upset or sad because of their personal issues. And that is why at at this time, being kind took precedence over any other issue that was happening in the work environment. It took precedence over any other mistake that somebody made or the challenges that we were facing as a team. And it is at that time we realized what being gentle means. It is in the worst circumstances that you are kind to someone. And I would like to believe that such strength, such gentleness, such kindness cannot really originate from me. And it is at this time that I realized that being gentle or kind does not mean that you are weak, does not mean that you are on the losing side, but it definitely means that you are being confident in the one who is able to impart this fruit of the Spirit in you. Good evening and a happy Sabbath to each and everyone. 
Today my testimony is on the topic of self-control. A few years back, when I had just began working very deeply in the company, I got the opportunity to meet a lot of high-ranking officials. And during one of these times, I came across a person who had twice my age in work experience. He had been working for a very, very long time. And uh, there was a certain point which we began to disagree over. And every time we met and spoke, we kept speaking about this point, and neither of us would give in. A few weeks and months went by, and eventually, on one big occasion or a big function, we met each other, and with hundreds of people around us, I showed him what I thought at that time was undeniable proof that what point I was bringing forward was correct. And I knew that if I was correct at that time, then it would be a huge boost to our company and solve a lot of our problems. But I couldn't get him to agree with me. And I felt that he brushed off my points a little bit too easily. Weeks and months of anger which had all built up inside me, I unleashed it at once. I unleashed all that anger at him and I yelled at him in front of hundreds of who's who people in society around us. And though at that moment I felt elation, it wasn't very long lasting. That night I felt remorse and anger. I couldn't bring myself up and I couldn't get muster of the courage to actually ask for forgiveness because I thought that what I did was extremely wrong and could not be forgiven. Months went by and we happened to cross paths once again during another function. And though we did cross by each other, I didn't actually bring up this topic and I didn't even speak to him at that moment like I hadn't done so for the months past by. And at that time, I thought it was as good as an opportunity as any other to just pray and ask for courage. To ask God to give me courage to actually go up to him and ask for forgiveness. Because I didn't want to just lose a business associate, but more importantly, it was a family friend that I seemed to be losing at that time. A close person who had played the role of a father figure in my life for a very long time. After the prayer, I went up to him and luckily enough, a few moments later, we were letting bygones be just as they are bygones and we were speaking over a beautiful lunch. See, there will be many moments like these in our lives where rather than just the usual alcohol or drugs or this, that, whatever it is, self-control needs to be applied to these facets as well in places where you might feel anger or anything else where we are stopping ourselves from doing wrong. At a time where we feel that my life, my rules is a way of life, it is very, very important to ensure that we are always in control because you never know what steps you are taking. Though you may feel that it is correct, at that moment, you will not know the lasting, long-lasting impact that it may have. And I was lucky in this instance, but a lot of times I have not been so, and a lot of people I know may not be as lucky as I was as well. And we may end up losing a lot. So always remember, self-control is key. Thank you. We just witnessed our friends who shared their testimony on the fruits of the Spirit. And we learn that the fruit of the Spirit is love and not hatred, joy and not discontent and mourning, peace, not irritation, anxiety. It is long-suffering and not complaining, gentleness and not unkindness or brutality, goodness and not meanness, faithfulness and not mistrust, meekness and not rudeness, temperance and not indiscipline. If we ask God, He is ready to give us unto these fruits that we can be well assured and say, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God.
let us pray a most kind and loving and living heavenly father in heaven we thank you for this sabbath evening that you have given us we thank you for not giving up on us and for keeping us safe from this virus um, god our desire and our determination is to be obedient to your will we have heard your children share their testimonies may we may we know and understand from the testimonies that's shared today oh lord that you will you will be there for us and and may we draw ourselves more closer to you from from today's message that is shared and thank you for your mercies thank you for your grace and love i ask for your mercies in jesus name amen